Does an electric van make sense? That's the one question I've got in my head at the moment because I'm reviewing this 2023 LDV E Deliver 9. This is a fully electric van. It's a big van and it's got a big old battery pack wedged in there under the body. And well, this is the first electric van of this size in Australia. And I wanna figure out if it does make sense. And I'm gonna do that in this video today. So I'm gonna do it by digging through the practicality of this van, have a look at the interior, and also do some load testing, and also some driving just around town, on the highway, and all of that sort of thing. So I'm gonna find out everything that you need to know about this LDV E-Deliver 9 electric van. Let's have a closer look. The LDV E-Deliver 9 is priced from $116,537 before on-road costs, but we've got the high roof model here and that pushes the prices up to $118,836. That is a huge price and it's more than double what a diesel powered Deliver 9 goes for with the same long wheelbase and high roof setup. This is a big van and it's the only offering of this size in Australia with a fully electric powertrain. It's 2.7 meters high and nearly six meters long, offering room for three up front and 12.3 cubic meters of storage space in the back. Fitting in a big 88 kilowatt hour battery pack means this big van weighs 2.7 tons unladen, but it still carries a solid 1.3 ton payload. LDV claims that the E-Deliver 9 can drive 275 kilometers between recharges, and that's according to the less lenient WLTP testing cycle. It's also able to charge it up to 80 kilowatts on a DC charger, allowing it to go from 20 to 80% in around 45 minutes. One thing to note here with this test vehicle we've got, see this big sign writing on the side and this cool little blue cable? doesn't come as a standard fit if you're gonna go out and buy one of these E-Deliver 9s. This is LDV's only promotional vehicle at the moment that we've got on test and they have decided to sticker it up. But it does beg a question actually. This thing, it is an EV, but it doesn't really look like one. There aren't many visual cues that this is an electric car. And I dare say, if you're a business wanting to portray a certain image, you're probably gonna want something similar to this. This is not a standard fit, however, you probably have to go to a sign writer or something like that to get something designed up. Here's the interior of the electric Deliver 9, the E Deliver 9. And sitting inside, you can't really tell much difference because the interior is mostly exactly the same as an internal combustion model. It's not exactly like you're jumping into a Tesla or anything. Not a bad thing though, because I like this interior. It works for the intended purpose. There's lots of storage around the place, which is good. And it's got a nice build quality as well, which is also important. I've got some storage slots here on the driver's side. There's cup holders there, one on this side and one on the other. Nice big storage shelf. Pop this open here and I've got a cigarette lighter, but 12 volt power outlet, probably for most people and somewhere to store your coins or put out cigarettes maybe. And also there's a glove box there and I do love these nice high roof van. You get this big storage shelf up above there. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. There's a spot to put your sunnies as well. And there's a blank here if you wanted to fit an additional radio, maybe a CB or a UHF would go in there. Pop this down as well. There's a spot for a clipboard, some extra cup holders there if you've got two up in the front here. But you can also fit three reasonably comfortably up the front here. This does work well as a three person van. Now in terms of the seating position, I do have a little bit of tilt adjustment through the steering column, but there's no reach. I've got to say though, I after I noticed that, I didn't really feel uncomfortable behind the wheel of this car. It's a comfortable, easy van to drive. I'll get to the driving impressions a little bit more later, but this interior does work just from the point of view of everyday usage. No, it's not from the space age or anything like that. This is just regular old van stuff inside. The only thing that tells you that this is an electric car, instead of a taco in front of you there, you've got like a power meter, I suppose. It tells you how much throttle you've got and also when the thing is charging on regenerative braking. That's about it. Of course, you've got a little EV badge there and a little bit of a blue color scheme going on, which people seem to love in their electric vehicles these days. One thing that definitely isn't space age, however, is this infotainment display. It's a decent size, it's nice and visible there, but the operating system is a bit lacking in my opinion. It's got Apple CarPlay, but no Android Auto, and the operating system is basic, and so is 
the radio quality. The speakers aren't very good. And I noticed on AM radio, which you're probably going to listen to a fair bit if you're spending bulk hours behind the wheel of this car, the reception isn't good at all. I think all these batteries and electric power in this thing actually impinge upon the reception. So it does get a little bit scratchy and annoying to listen to. So you're better off plugging up the Bluetooth and streaming the radio via your phone instead. So what we've got here is a long wheelbase and high roof variant of the E-Deliver 9. So it's the biggest you can get and it's got a huge amount of space in the back here. The payload is decent as well. 1.35 tons actually you can fit in the back. And as you can see here as evidence we did do some payload testing in this van. I'll get to the result a little bit later but you can get a pallet in straight into the front here no worries and you've got tie down points just about everywhere too you could easily fit two pallets in here and have well there is eight tie downs overall and they're nice and sturdy tie downs which are easy to use now in terms of other things we've got a nice durable hard plastic finish here and you've got a lot of areas to mount things i suppose if you're going to do an actual fit out in this van it's ready to go in that regard it's a little bit bare but it's also set up for work straight away which i do like and because this is a high roof variant i do like this extra little bit of storage you've got here above the shelves in front so if you do need to fit some things like maybe a first aid kit or something like that a little something a bit bulky your big winter jumper perhaps you can pack it in there and get it out of the way which is cool so the van does work as a van which is important one thing i have noticed though push this door closed and you don't push it too hard it does tend to stay ajar which is a little bit annoying so what I've found you gotta either really push it or just get your hand in there give it a little shove at the end just to make sure that goes in clearly they've put a little bit of lube in there to help it out but maybe it needs another little spray now this is the back end of the e-deliver 9 one thing I do want to point out is that this badge here is a little bit wonky and it's well, let's be honest, it's not a very good look, is it? I'm not sure if that was done in Australia or where this van was made in China, but I think that just could have been done a bit better. But anyway, let's open this bad boy up. These doors are huge, just like the van, and they open right out as well. So you've got good access into the back here. If you want to load a lot of stuff in, once again, things like pallets, whatever it might be, you can all get pushed in nice and easily. There's a nice metal load lip here, so you're not going to damage this thing when you're pulling big and heavy things in and out of the van all the time. And up above, you've got your eye in the sky there. It's almost like a bird's eye view camera. That's your reversing camera. It does come in handy when you're trying to get this big van into small spaces. But otherwise, it's kind of like what I was saying up the front. This is exactly the same as a petrol or diesel van. It just happens to be electric. Under the floor here, it's all the same positioning, but you've got your big 88 kilowatt hour battery pack. That is a massive battery pack, by the way, but it doesn't get in the way of actually using this thing as a van, and that's important. Driving this electric van is mostly a very easy experience. There's plenty of torque available, and just like every other electric car I've driven, the torque is instantaneous and the powertrain is silent, and that's all really good. And there are lots of similarities to the driving experience otherwise to a normal LDV Deliver 9 van, which is a good thing because this Deliver 9 is actually a fantastic van. It's a big step forward for LDV overall in terms of the way it drives, how comfortable it is, how refined it is, and all of that sort of thing. This E-Deliver 9 carries all of those important updates and upgrades in comparison to something like a G10 or some of their older vehicles. This is modern, comfortable and refined. All those things that you do want in a van. It just happens to be electric. This is a stripped out interior and it's a big hollow space so you do get a bit of booming noise from time to time some rattles and creaks and that sort of thing so it's refined for a van i suppose and while the powertrain is silent the rest of the van isn't so much but for this class of vehicle it is pretty good so i'm just waiting for a set of traffic lights here hit the accelerator this thing surprisingly has a little bit of boogie on offer which is funny being such a big van there's not too much wait time to press the throttle and get this thing moving out of the hole and it does work for general town driving which is where you're going to be wanting to drive this thing because 
it is speed limited to around 94 kilometers per hour. Now it's definitely got enough power to get up to that speed fairly quickly and I would dare say it's got enough power to go somewhere beyond that speed as well but it is speed limited and I think it's because this thing will just get too inefficient to drive at higher speeds than that. Wind resistance is the big enemy of energy efficiency for this van and LDV have made the choice to speed limit it just so you can maintain a little bit of battery condition and range driving it around. When you're driving in this sort of area, I suppose, in the suburbs and that sort of thing, obviously it's not a big deal. You're not going to be getting up to 90 k's an hour, but once you're on the motorway, it does feel a bit limited and a commercial vehicle like this, it's probably going to be working for a business. Time is money and that will probably get frustrating, especially when you've got diesel and petrol vans overtaking you on the highway all the time. Now I have done some load testing in this van. I didn't have the video guy with me at the time, just me on my lonesome and my phone. So I took some snaps, did the testing. I had one ton of brick layer sand just behind me there. So the payload is around 1.3 ton. I was well within that, but that's probably a good indication of this vehicle loaded up and being used as a commercial vehicle, which it is and the performance of the suspension and that sort of thing and the powertrain in particular was very good overall. This thing has lots of torque and it's easy to get to so performance wasn't affected too much and the suspension did start to feel like it was working a bit hard at times. The suspension, the dampers in particular were starting to run out of performance when you're going over rough and corrugated roads but that was only you'd notice it in some more extreme situations I suppose of speed bumps, big potholes and that sort of thing. So generally around town with one ton in the back this performed quite well. And I was also surprised to note that the consumption of this vehicle didn't seem to jump up too much. Now it did go up a little bit but not massively as you might expect. I would hazard that it would be around a 30% drop in efficiency overall or something like that. Now your mileage will certainly vary in your own usage and you've got to keep into account I suppose. A vehicle like this, how far do you want to drive it between recharges and is it possible? When you jump in the car in the morning and it's fully charged, it's probably going to give you a range of around 250 kilometers with the aircon turned on and that is actually reasonably accurate overall. You could get close to that if you're smart with the way that you drive it and you try and keep things as efficient as possible. With a full load in the back, maybe I'd be dropping that to around 200 kilometers to be safe. And well, I just don't know. Your positions may vary in terms of whether that is enough for a van. I feel like if you're buying a van of this size, you're going to be filling it up with parcels in the back. and. That's a really big space. It's probably going to take you all day and a few hundred kilometers to actually deliver all that stuff in the back. Is 200 enough for you? Well, I'll let you answer that. I'm going to say though, it's probably not enough. All right, so imagine this. You're out in the field all day, you've been working, but you need to charge your van up. I've got this NRMA charger here. It's the right plug and this is a fast charger, which is handy. So let's go plug it in. Oh, I'm out of space here. The charger is on the front there, but this cable is not long enough. So what I'm gonna have to do is move this van back. Oh, I've got a little bit more space there actually. Is that gonna reach? Oh, we're on actually. Oh, it's tight. Let's see how we go. Ah. Oh. Thank the Lord for that, that extra little bit of space. There we go. It's a tight fit, but we just made it and we can charge this thing up. Now I have done a fast charge on this van before and I was getting 75 kilowatts, which is reasonably fast. And you can go from 30% up to full in around 40 minutes, which is pretty good, I reckon. However, on a slower 11 kilowatt AC charger, you'd be waiting around 12 hours for a full charge. For a seven kilowatt home charger, which is a common fitment in most properties, this number would be even longer. And don't forget about the size of this van when you're looking for a charger, especially when there are so many chargers in urban areas that are tucked away in underground car parks. And the 2.7 metre height of this E-Deliver 9 means it just won't be able to get in. 
Some van lifers might like the idea of a zero emissions life on the road, and the eDeliver 9 could certainly offer this. It's got plenty of space in the back, along with a proper payload, and you can stand up in there quite happily. However, we would probably want to see a lot more charging points out on the open road and in far-flung locations before this is really made a possibility. All right, we've pulled up, we've got the van plugged in and charging over there. We're in the middle of suburbia. It's a little bit noisy as you can probably hear, but I think it works because this is a delivery van at the end of the day and it's gonna be plugging roads just like this one in the real world. And I've come to the conclusion, does this work? Does this electric van really work in the real world? Before I answer, I'm gonna be a little bit annoying and ask you to please like this video, give us a thumbs up, and also subscribe to Drive on YouTube because we're gonna be doing a lot more videos like this in the future. Now, does it work? For me, the short answer is no. I don't think it does. It's still too compromised. It's too expensive for $100,000 just about double the price of a normal internal combustion van and it's compromised in terms of how far it can drive between recharges still. It's got a massive battery pack in there, but it just doesn't cut the mustard from my point of view. But there's still gonna be people who are interested in this van, regardless of the fact that a diesel one will do a better job for cheaper, they want an electric vehicle. And well, from that point of view, this does work. As long as you're willing to put up the compromise of the high entry price, the speed limit and also the limited driving range overall. This thing does feel pretty well sorted and cohesive and of course it does give you that image that you might be wanting to portray in terms of sustainability, zero emissions, carbon neutrality, whatever that may be. That's a business thing. I'll leave that alone. If you do need to buy this van, it does work well. It's not awful. It does work, but just not as well, in my opinion, as a normal van.